The year is 1944. World War II is at its peak. The Allies successfully landed in Normandy and are now closing on Germany. We are at a point of no return. Failure is not an option. And they would win with, well, besides the obvious one, with inflatable tanks. This is how artists basically help win the war. And also, do we still do it nowadays? The term is called show of force, a military operation intended to warn or to intimidate an opponent by showcasing a capability or will to act if one is provoked. So it's like a dick measuring contest. This is what most of the Cold War was, testing nukes every other day or, you know, getting to the moon. These days they say that the value of the dollar is not even based on what's in Fort Knox, because we're not sure how much gold is in there actually. But instead, it's based on the size of the American army and its arsenal. So a show of force is very important. And you know what else is important? You hitting the like button and subscribing, thank you very much. In World War II, the Ghost Army, and no, not this one, still a great name, was created and had a special mission to impersonate other Allied army units to deceive the enemy. They got this brilliant idea from a previous successful deceiving mission by the British called Operation Bertram in Egypt 1942, where they both faked tanks out of wireframes and also camouflaged real tanks into trucks. It was a complete tactical surprise and defeated the local Germans. So the idea for the Ghost Army was to create a unit that would have fake tanks, trucks, cannons, guns, and to make it seem that they were way more soldiers than they actually were. Remember these were the days before high resolution satellites. Intelligence had to rely on basic propeller planes with basic film cameras or just people with binoculars. The leader of the Ghost Army was a guy named Ralph Ingersoll, who was a publisher and a writer, a creative guy. And the entire recruitment process for the Ghost Army was to go after other creative guys, artists, sculptors, painters, people who worked in advertising, and even actors. The most obvious aspect of this Ghost Army was the fake vehicles. They would use rubber to make fake tanks, trucks, and artillery. It was the same principle as bouncy castles, really, and they could inflate in minutes. And then they would use hard sticks to support the thinner parts, like the flaccid cannons. Everything had to look the part from a distance. They all had the right markings and the right unit numbers depending on which they were impersonating. My favorite detail was the tracks because real tanks create deep tracks in their path so they had to use a bulldozer to create fake tracks leaning up to the bulldozer. Dang it Dale, that's genius. The Ghost Army also had to make some noise. A lot of noise. So they used something called sonic deception, where they recorded real tanks, trucks and troops in various situations, and then they played that back over huge loudspeakers that could project up to 15 miles. This could really trick the mind of the enemy. After a while, my eyes were beginning to tell me what my ears were hearing, and I began to see tanks. It was, it was absolutely psychologically, it was the most un unnerving thing I would actually begin to see in the dark, see tanks. They weren't there. They were in my ear, but they weren't. Some real movie magic there. The sonic deception was used to great effect in one of the most important missions, Operation Bettenberg, along the border of France and Germany. There were troops on either side of the river, and General Patton realized that he had a 75-mile unguarded gap where the Germans could break across the border. Enters the Ghost Army, especially with the loudspeakers, because although they did have the inflatable tanks, the Germans were on the other side of the river and they could only really hear what was going on on the other side. Did you say tanks? What's all this nonsense about tanks? Our OP here reports definite sounds of tanks moving into assembly about there. The deception went on for a week, the longest for them so far, until the real army unit finally came in and took over. The sonic deception wasn't only with these recordings and loudspeakers, it was also with the radio transmissions. They would have radio operators impersonate actual Morse code operators to make them talk just like them. Otherwise the Germans would know what was going on. I mean, these guys were true heroes, fighting a different kind of war, but an important one nonetheless. Come on, George, make a movie about this. You know the war is over. So what does Shore Force look like nowadays? That we're not in the middle of a world war, just a pandemic. Let's take a look at China as an example. Obviously, satellites and planes have crazy resolution cameras nowadays, so you can't really use rubber tanks. But they have been doing some interesting work in the South China Sea for years now, even though it's international waters and it's not part of their territory. It's right there on Google Maps for everyone to see. They've been terraforming small islands for... stuff. Some have full airports and football fields. Look at this one in particular, in the Spratly Islands. 
It's got a full landing strip, tons of massive warehouses. God knows what goes on in there. Oh, look at that. They really love their football. This has caused some tensions because this island, for example, is just 150 miles off the coast of the Philippines. And international water starts around 230 miles of a country's coast. So this is really f***ed. I wish this was all fake stuff made of rubber, but you know it's not. If you can think of another show of force, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. It's free. See ya.